Welcome to the world of ZIP System Building Enclosures, where we believe in striving for optimal air, water, and thermal management, no matter the region or climate. Because when you have the right products to do the right job the right way, the first time, you're building to a higher code, the ZIP Code. I'm Jake Bruton, and today we're at one of our custom homes outside of Columbia, Missouri that Aero Building, my firm, is building. And I want to talk to you about why there is a full coverage coat of mud on the ceiling and how we came to that decision. Let's do it now. Okay, when we start looking at our USG sheetrock and how we're gonna finish it and what level, it's important for us to like have a quick conversation about what each of these things, the pros and cons of each level of finish. For us, we're really gonna talk about fire taping level four and level five. So. Let's start with a conversation about how tastes have changed over the years. Uh, I would say that when I first took over the company in 2007, it was absolutely standard that our garages, that our unfinished basements that would still have uh, finished walls, and uh, our mechanical rooms would all just be a fire tape. A fire tape is uh, the USG sheetrock is applied to the wall, and then mud and tape is applied to the uh, seams and the butts and then uh, the screw heads. That's it. It's not smoothed, it's not a second coat, it's not sanded most of the time. It would just be fire tape. That's just enough to make it a sealed assembly of sorts. That was absolutely the standard uh, for the longest time. I grew up in multiple houses that had a uh, fire tape ceiling and fire tape walls and then were even still painted. Uh, but it wasn't something that was a care or a concern for the builder at that point. Somewhere since 2007, we have made the transition both uh, with our clientele but also our clientele have made the transition to expecting a higher level of finish even in the garage. Our garages have become more of a space that we inhabit that we store things. It just seems like we live there more than what we used to. We would never even dream today of doing one that didn't get a finish on the inside of the walls, that didn't get uh, a USG sheetrock on the walls or anything like that. It is now a level four minimum. So let's talk about what level four is. Level four is just like that fire tape coat. It is uh, a coat of mud that beads or that sets the um, the tape on the seams and the butts. It is a treatment to all of the nail heads or the screw heads. And then it is multiple layers of finishing after that to try to make those transitions between panels as invisible as possible. The majority of the panel is still visible. Uh, the majority of the panel, you can still see that um, lightish gray paper facer that's on it. Uh, all that we're trying to do with our seam and butt treatments is to uh, make as literally possible to view the, the, the union of the two pieces. That's it. It's multiple layers, it's sanding, it may even be a touch-up layer. And then most of the time for our company, then we have a high build primer that is sprayed and back rolled over the entire surface in an attempt to make the, the paper facer and the mud work blend to be one surface. The challenge with this is when we pull it out of a garage and we put it into a space that is substantially more, we'll call it important to the home, uh, those things can have a tendency to show. They, they might show up because of multiple reasons. So what do we do on a level four to try to uh, alleviate that, that chance is we do things like we put up really big sheets. So this wall is somewhere in the range of 14 feet long. You can see that one of our panels goes all the way across because it actually ends with a doorway and an inside corner. Well, that has now removed a butt joint and we've lessened the amount of mud work that has to go onto the wall. And so therefore the less mud work, the less opportunity we have for uh, some sort of elevation change or texture change showing in that panel. So we can do things like that. We can properly size our panels. We can uh, create layouts that will be less likely to be seen, things like that. But we still will have some uh, seams or butts that may or may not show. 
in many places that won't matter in a bathroom that things are going to get covered with tile or a cabinet or a toilet in front of it or a kitchen where we're going to have appliances and backsplash and cabinets and countertops and uppers that wall is probably not going to be seen as drywall except for the tiniest little sliver here or there uh, and we're not terribly concerned about it the challenge becomes when we don't have these options we can't get panels long enough to cover a room or we have raking light uh, that could be an issue so let's talk first about raking light because that's kind of what i think of as the biggest issue um, besides dark colors i should say we'll come back to that uh, raking light behind our, our our camera crew here we have a 16 foot wide eight foot tall uh, patio door that faces south southwest there is going to be times where the light coming through this door casts large shadows across the room if we have butt joints on the ceiling that raking light is going to be substantially more revealing to anything that's happening on the ceiling with our seams than anything that happens on the walls unless that wall is also parallel to the light we run into issues where we have a butt joint and light raking across it right so how do we resolve that? Well, people love big windows, so we're probably not gonna get rid of big windows. They love big volume ceilings. We're probably not gonna get rid of a big volume ceilings. The next place that we have a challenge is um, wall sconces and raking light where the light fixture is close to the ceiling and gonna, gonna spread vert or horizontally across the ceiling. Those things are design issues that are probably gonna be out of your hands as the builder. They are gonna be challenging to deal with from a mud work perspective and I would recommend that you look at level five in that situation same as the raking light from the door I will tell you that the places that I've found those to be the biggest problem are ceiling and walls in stairwells where you're going from one to two floors in one stairwell and we have a raking light or a sconce that shines up and down that's a real challenge the next largest challenge for what we're looking at is dark colors uh, and I'll tell you that I had uh, a client hire me a few years ago to repaint a, a rather large wall in their office and the wall when we got there was a very calm yellow color that was very faint where you could almost not tell it was yellow and they were rebranding the company and they wanted to go a really dark color in the process of our remodel that wasn't really touching anything except for that room and when we painted that wall that dark color all of the seams and butts showed up immediately and they blamed it on us, and I had not considered the fact that that dark color was gonna be the problem, even though when you looked at it when it was yellow, that it was perfectly fine. So dark color is another huge one. The darker the color, the more it's gonna show. If a client asks for black, I would recommend that you have to go to level five. So let's talk about what is level five and how they executed it at this project. Level five is the entire surface gets a level four and then the entire surface gets covered with another coat of, of uh, mud treatment. So there are multiple different ways that we've done that. In the past, when we were executing that level five ourselves, a lot of times we would use our hopper and thin down uh, mud to then spray the entire ceiling as if we were gonna do an orange peel and then just rake it off so that it would be actually smooth and flat. That can be challenging from a, the, the hopper's kind of a difficult thing to get even amounts of mud everywhere. So we ended up raking a lot of it off. Another way that you can do it is just with wide taping knives and trays. You can hand spread the mud across the entire ceiling. You're gonna be thinning it down, so it should be easy to work. Uh, however, I think the way that uh, Josh with JB Drywall did it in this project with his crew, they put they plopped a piece of uh, USG sheetrock down as a pallet on the floor and then they thinned their material and they actually used an 18 inch wide paint roller with a thick nap roller. They rolled the entire ceiling and at the same time he used one of his level five knives on a pole that then he's able to rake that mud at virtually the same time that his assistant is rolling. So we have as even a first coat as we can put because if you think about when you paint with a paint roller on the walls, you can put the paint on pretty darn even if you're paying attention. They're able to put the mud on pretty darn even, and then they take the, the knife and rake it immediately, and then they sand the entire ceiling. So the, 
the, the section gets sanded just like it would be if it were a seam or a butt. The whole thing gets touched and then they used raking light to make little spot repairs to spots that they thought might be an issue or may, may or may not uh, show, as you would say. And they use a product that comes out to be a purple color so that then they can find them very easily when it's time to sand. So the places that we're most likely to use this, not counting like the raking light and the, uh, uh, or raking light from nature and raking light from man-made and not counting dark color would simply be large volume ceilings and large walls that are gonna have people's attention. Places that we would never bother specking uh, level five would be in like a mud room, a laundry room, or closets, and most likely most basement bedrooms because they're gonna be a little bit on the darker side than, than a room that might be a corner bedroom like we have here. Uh, I think it's super important that this be one of our tools in our tool chest to ensure that this is the best possible product. If we could, we would do this on every surface in every major room in the house. It's not normally a choice budget-wise. We have to work within restricted budgets most of the time. This is not something that we can execute on every project on every wall, but on ones that we can, this is definitely an upgrade that I sell to clients as you're never gonna know we did it, and I know that's a hard sell, but you will absolutely know if we didn't do it, if you have these existing conditions. So when I think it's important, it's a, you won't know if we don't do it, but you will know if we do. Uh, and I think that it's one of those, you know, it's a tool in your tool bag that can potentially make your product better than your competitors. And I think if you haven't done this with your uh, gypsum crew, you should talk to them about whether or not they're comfortable doing this and get them to learn how to do it because it's not incredibly common, especially in uh, my home market of Columbia or, or a secondary market, Kansas City. It's just not something that very many uh, crews are tackling on a regular basis. With a little bit of practice, uh, they can be quite good at it. And it makes this one smooth surface that hides all those little details that happen here that are not necessarily imperfections, but that might catch your eye. So stay tuned for more content about USG sheetrock and the choices we made on this project. We had a lot of cool stuff here that we want to share. Till next time, don't forget to subscribe to the Unbuild It podcast. That's Steve Basic, Peter Yost, and myself talking about building, business of building, building science, and generally picking at each other and having a good time. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.